What is up guys, it's Cal, and in this video we're going to be getting the achievement Glory of the Shadowlands Hero. This is getting all the dungeon achievements in Shadowlands to ultimately reward you with the Ferocious Gorger Mount. A couple of things to mention before we get started, all of these achievements have to be done on Mythic. Keep in mind that you, if you fail an achievement, Mythic dungeons don't have boss lockouts to them, just loot lockouts. So you can redo the dungeon and you just won't get gear from the bosses. The only real requirements you need is that you need someone in your group to be a Night Fae Covenant. You only need one person, since there's an achievement in Mists of Tyrna Scythe, which requires you to get to an area that only a Night Fae can unlock. Other than that, there's an achievement in uh, Spires of Ascension that having a Demon Hunter in a group makes it very possible. You need a class that can have high mobility in the air, if that makes sense. And a Demon Hunter with its double dashing and everything else it has made it actually possible. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to start our meta achievements journey in Bastion with the Necrotic Wake dungeon. The first boss in this dungeon does not have an achievement, but the second boss, Amarth the Harvester, does. It's pretty straightforward. You want to come to the opposite corner of the boss area before pulling the boss and have someone in your group click on this grizzly curio. It's kind of hidden by all the shrubbery, but only one person in your group has to click this and it will spawn a grizzly colossus. And you probably want to DPS this dude down to around 30% health. The only thing to look out for with him is his rasping screech ability. Just make sure it gets interrupted. So once he's at about 30-ish percent health, then go ahead and pull the boss. Once the boss has been engaged, go ahead and kill the Colossus and just tank the boss over his body. Don't worry about doing any DPS to the boss really because Amarth is going to cast Final Harvest, which will suck up the life essence of the Colossus, heal to full and gain a buff called Bountiful Harvest. This just heals the boss for 1% health every four seconds and increases shadow damage done by 25%. So just take out the boss once you see he has his buff and you should be good. Next achievement is called Surgeon Supplies and it's on the following boss. Now there are two barrels of spare parts on the opposite corners of the boss that your group wants to look at first, one barrel in each corner. Once Stitch Flesh's creation is pulled by your tank, your tank should pull that abomination within 40 yards of one of those barrels, and everyone in your group should stand in front of the barrel. The abomination is going to cast Meat Hook on your party members, and they need to run over and stand in front of the barrel with no one else in its way. Now keep in mind that when the Meat Hook casts from the boss finishes, the Meat Hook to location is locked into place, so the party members can move out of the way as the hook flies towards the barrel. It will break the barrel, a bunch of small guys will come out of it that your group can just AOE down and yeah so just keep in mind that the meat hook has a 40 yard range which is why I said bring the abomination within 40 yards of it but anyways do the same thing with the other barrel then down the boss for your achievement now for the final achievement of this boss, ready for raiding 7. This is a personal achievement, so as long as you do it, you, personally, will get the achievement. During the Nalfor fight, you have to dodge the Comet Storm, Blizzard, and Frozen Bind abilities that the boss has. Now if you're going for this achievement for everyone in your group, it does make it a lot easier if every DPS in your group is ranged, but it's of course not required. If you do have all range, then you want to start the fight off with all of your DPS and your healer in the 4 individual corners of the boss arena. So what do these abilities look like? So Comet Storm is cast by the boss on everyone and it spawns a series of small swirls under people's feet. Once this is cast, everyone in your group needs to keep moving. You can move in smallish circles around your corner of the arena to dodge it. Frozen Binds is an unavoidable ability that is cast on anyone in your group, except the tank. It will root you for 30 seconds, but it can be dispelled. Now this is on you, you won't fail the achievement, but if anyone is within this giant blue circle around you when it's dispelled, then they will fail the achievement. So this is why your group is spread out in four different corners. Just make sure that if you do have a melee that gets it, that your tank gets out of the frozen bind circle before it's dispelled so they can get the achievement. Now throughout this fight, depending on how fast you kill the boss, some in your group will be ported down to the side of the platform. In fact, I, I think it might be percent based actually, but when they're down there, they have to run to the end of this small gauntlet and click on a Kyrian to free them and then get flown back up to the platform, all while dodging blizzards. The blizzards are giant swirls. You really can't miss them. So if you're down there, dodge all the swirls you can. So the goal really is to DPS the boss as fast as possible because once the boss dies, everyone who dodged all of three of those abilities will get the achievement. Next up, let's go to Spires of Ascension. The first achievement here is called Goliath Offline. It's from the third boss, Orphreon. 
probably said that wrong. So the setup for this achievement is to clear all of the trash in this room, since the boss has to be dragged around it and you don't want to worry about trash during the fight. There are these three shattered devastators located around the room that need to be activated and killed. So once the boss is pulled, you'll want your group to stand on one of the shattered devastators for the boss's imperial ordinance ability. This puts blue arrows over everyone's heads, it will drop puddles around the devastator, make sure to get out of those puddles of course or you'll probably die. You all don't have to be right on top of each other, just make sure that the puddles are all touching the devastator. Once the boss reaches zero energy and recharges anima, the devastator will become active and your group has 33 seconds to kill the devastator before it becomes inactive again. If that does end up happening, you didn't fail the achievement, you just have to go through another cycle of empowering it. Anyways, kill the Shattered Devastator, bring the boss over to the next inactive one, do the same thing, repeat a third time for the third Devastator, and GG for the boss for your achievement. Next achievement is off the last boss, Devos, and it's called Experiential. So this achievement was actually kind of buggy for us. So how this goes is that when you engage the boss, you can look up and you'll see Kyrian and Forsworn fighting. Each time the boss does an abyssal detonation, a Kyrian in the sky will die. Now how we did this achievement is as soon as the first abyssal detonation went off and everyone stood in the bubble, we had a very fast person run out, after the detonation of course, and jump off the cliff, off the arena. This will float you up to the sky and you'll get slow fall and you can land on one of the glowing blue spears. Once you do, your UI will change and you need to throw the spear at Devos. I made sure to do this before her next abyssal detonation so I didn't die, which did cut it close. Now you have to do that five times for the achievement. Now the most important thing to look out for is the spear of duty debuff that she now has. This shows that you did hit her with it. This will stack up for every spear of doubt you hit her with. Now this achievement can be done in phase two when there are no abyssal detonations are happening and she's flying around on the front side of the platform. But I just found this to be harder to hit her, honestly, and occasionally when I did hit her with it, she just wouldn't get a stack of the debuff, hence it being kind of buggy. So I always attempted it during phase one, which she does have multiple phase ones during the fight. Now you do only get five spears, so if you miss one, you do have to restart. Also the spears do have a timer in which they despawn, it seems like. I'm not exactly sure what it is, but we did an attempt where we tried to turtle the boss for all five five spear of duties to be there so we could just do one after another and so we could also get multiple people doing them at a time but when we attempted that some of the first ones actually started to despawn also for some reason when our tank attempted it Devos wasn't getting the spear of duty debuff regardless of our tank hitting her with it or not so that's another reason why it was kind of buggy but as long as one person in your group sees that she has five stacks of the spear of duty debuff then your group is good to kill her for everyone to get the achievement the last achievement in the dungeon is called, I can see my house from here. So once Devos dies, there are these wings that pop up. Once you click the wings, it will propel you forward through an orb and you'll be gliding through the dungeon. To get this achievement, your group needs to get all five orbs within one minute, but there's a catch to this. So as you just saw, when I clicked the wings, I flew through one of the orbs. Going forward a bit, you can see three of the other orbs. And then the last orb is near the entrance of the dungeon, on top of this pillar. Now getting to this final orb actually takes just over a minute. So the setup for this achievement is having one person click the wings. It does propel them through one orb, but they should just make their way to get into a position through this fifth orb. Now you have to wait roughly two to three minutes because at this point the first orb will actually respawn. So if you do fail the achievement, all you have to do is wait for the orbs to respawn, which takes like two to three minutes. So once you have one person in place to walk through the orb closest to the dungeon entrance and the first orb respawns, everyone else in your group should click the wings to float around and grab the other orbs by just floating through them. Once the wings are clicked by your party members, the timer starts since it already propels them through the first orb. So whoever is by the dungeon entrance orb, which is me, can go ahead and just walk through it once they've clicked the wings. So like these orbs don't have to be gone in any particular order. And then one person goes through the right orb, one person goes straight down the center for that orb, and one person goes through the left orb. The thing about the left orb is it doesn't seem like you can actually just normally get it through conventional means. It seems to be way far out there. So we had our demon hunter, go through it. And with the double dashing and vengeful retreat, the orb was much easier to get. So if anyone had another class go for that orb, let people in the comments below know what abilities they used and what class it was so it's easier for everyone. But once all five of those orbs have been walked through within one minute, everyone in your group will get the achievement. 
Next, we're gonna head over to Ardenwield in Mist of Tyranny Scythe for the Hooked on Hydroponics achievement. This achievement requires at least one person in your group to be Night Fae. You really only need one Night Fae person, um, but having multiple obviously doesn't matter. So before you get to the first boss, there's a pathway to the left that only a Night Fae person can open. Once it's open, there's a bunch of mushrooms around the area that people can click on for buffs. The green mushrooms give a DPS buff and the purple mushrooms give a stamina buff, but those aren't for the achievement. In this small area will be some Hydra seeds on the ground. You only need one person to pick up a seed, and they just set it down in the middle of the boss arena. And then you can engage the boss. So you can DPS Dromon a bit, but don't outright kill it. Dromon will cast this ability called Tears of the Forest, which spawns a bunch of blue swirls around the arena. Now some of these swirls will land on the seed and it will grow in size. The locations of where these tears drop does seem to be where players are, so you do want players to stand on the seeds so the tears will fall on it. Even though they do leave behind blue puddles that hurt, if the seed has not hatched and the blue puddles are overwhelming, you can take Dromon down to 20%, so Ingra takes a bunch of extra damage. Just don't kill Ingra, but this will clear the blue puddles on the ground. Anyways, once about five tears fall on the seed, a Hydra will hatch from it. Kill the Hydra, then kill the boss, and you'll get your achievement. Next achievement is called Someone Could Trip On These. This achievement requires everyone in your group to click on six toys that are scattered around the maze leading to Mist Collar. This is a personal achievement, but it's an easy one. Just everyone has to click on the toys for them to get the achievement. First, what you want to do is kill Mist Collar, the boss. The achievement is not part of the boss fight, but the maze does open up, making this achievement possible. So once Mist Collar is dead, go back through the maze to click the toys. There's a picture on the screen now of where these toys are located. They're very tiny. There's a super happy fun ball, uh, a creepy doll, some bedtime stories. There's also a drum, there's a pan flute, and then there's also a harp. Once all those are clicked, you'll get your achievement. The final achievement of the dungeon is Hunger for Knowledge off the last boss. So as you're killing the trash to the last boss, you want to make sure you keep a Spine Mod Gorge or Trash Mob alive for the achievement. There are multiple around, but just one is needed for the achievement. Now this achievement is supposed to be super easy, but it was kind of glitching for us. Now when it glitches, it's not a huge deal since the boss is easily resettable. So you're supposed to pull the Spine Mod Gorger over the cocoon of Lakali for it to feast. Then you kill it. Well. That wasn't happening for whatever reason, so what we did was we pulled the boss out to reset him, then when the boss was getting ready to respawn, we pulled the Spine Mod Gorger over the cocoon, then when the boss did respawn, the Gorger consumed the cocoon. Now it is about 5 second cast for the Spine Mod Gorger to consume the cocoon, so make sure to not stun him, or you failed. He'll consume the cocoon and gain an enlightened buff. Just kill him, then kill the boss for your achievement. Now we're off to the other side. So this dungeon does have a difficult achievement to it, and I'd recommend doing this place in two goes to get all the achievements, but it is possible in one. Anyways, the first achievement you'll be going for is called Highly Communicable. For this achievement, your group needs to kill a car, the Mana Storms, Dealer Zyexa, and Muzala while at least one party member has the Corrupted Blood debuff in a single run up to other side. This is an obvious reference to the Corrupted Blood incident that happened back in September of 2005 in WoW. So how this is going to go is you obviously want to designate which two people are going to be bouncing it back and forth. Having one as your healer and the other as someone who has a damage reduction is useful. Now be careful with immunities that take off debuffs such as Pally Bubbles or Mage Ice Blocks. These will take off the Corrupted Blood debuff from you. So during the fight, Hakar will shoot someone with the Corrupted Blood. Those two people want to stack, they'll bounce it back and forth, down Hakar, and you don't get the achievement yet since you have to bounce it through the entire dungeon. If one of the people bouncing it is a druid, they can go travel form for the other person to ride on their back and it will continue to bounce back and forth. It's just these people cannot die through the dungeon. If one of them does die, then another party member needs to be quick on their feet and stand in the red circle to keep it bouncing. So now we're at the Mana Storms with their achievement, Couples Therapy. This is an easy achievement and is still easily gotten if you're doing the Corrupted Blood achievement at the same time. So Mill House will be attackable first. Don't immediately blow them up. Wait for Maleficent to cast Echo Finger Laser Extreme on someone. This puts a red arrow over their head. Go stand on Mailhouse and it will stun him. Then blow him up. Maleficent will come in the ring. Someone will get Shadow Fury, which puts a blue arrow over their head. Go stand on Maleficent and it will stun her. Then blow her up and you'll get the achievement. The next achievement is called Thinking With 
dot dot dot, and it will be a little difficult if you're doing the Corrupted Blood achievement at the same time, but it's possible. Now once the boss fight is engaged, there will be 5 floating orbs over the boss field. All of those orbs need to be hit for the achievement. They get hit by getting shot up into them. One is in the center and the other four are around the circle. So each person in your group should pick an orb to stand under, but they don't all have to be hit at the same time. So if you're doing the corrupted blood achievement at the same time, the two people with the blood can just stand under the same orb. The boss will cast displacement trap and white swirls will appear under people's feet. Move out of those. So your group can go ahead and walk in their white puddles to get shot into the orbs since the boss sets out two sets of traps before reaching 100 energy. 100 energy is when she does the big explosion thing where everyone should be in the air to not take a ton of damage. So once you get shot in the air, you don't have a lot of wiggle room in the air to fall on the orb. So you do need to make sure the trap is like set right under it. This is obviously a different story if you have slow fall or you're a demon hunter or something. So one person can grab multiple orbs, that's fine. Not everyone has to touch an orb. As long as all five orbs are gotten, you'll get the achievement from killing dealer Zyexa. The orbs are not clicked, you just go through them. Now it's very important if you are still doing the corrupted blood achievement at this time and you've managed to not lose it, that Either Corrupted Blood person does not click this glowing green whatever thing that brings you to the start because it takes like 12 seconds, both of you might get separated in midair, and it's just enough time to lose your Corrupted Blood debuff. There is a small pathway that you can run up off to the side to get back. And then we have Muzala, which doesn't have an achievement specifically for him, but you need to kill him. Your Corrupted Blood people still alive to get highly communicable. It's just very important that they stay stacked and they take the same portal to the totems when it comes that time. Kill Muzala for your highly communicable achievement. Now we're going to head over to Maldraxxus to the Theater of Pain. First achievements being 3 choose 1. This requires you to kill the first boss 3 different times, but you need to kill each member of the trio last. It's pretty easy and straightforward. Just do the boss once, killing one of them last, exit the dungeon and reset it, then do it again, killing a different one last, then walk out, reset it again, and kill the third last. It's a good thing this boss has very minimal trash leading to it, but once you've done that, you should get the achievement. Next achievement is Fresh Meat, which is off Gore Chop. So before the boss is pulled, you can see two meat piles at opposite corners of the room. The boss needs to be dragged over them, and you just have to wait for him to cast his Tenderizing Smash, which is a big brown circle. He'll destroy the meat pile, bring him over to the second one, and do the same thing. Kill Gore Chop for your achievement. Then the final achievement in this dungeon is Royal Rumble. So your group has to defeat two ghostly contenders during the fight, then finish off Mordretha. So first step is to get Mordretha down to 50%. Once you do, you'll see two ghostly contenders out in the audience that you just want to select one and type slash challenge and it will run into the field. Only one person has a type slash challenge on it. You can pull both if you feel like you have enough DPS for that, but keep in mind that they do have an interruptible fear ability. This is being recorded at the beginning of the expansion, so we just took one at a time. Now something to note about this achievement is if you do end up failing it, any contenders that were still alive by the time your group died will still be alive in the crowd when you start up the boss again. So you can just pull that alive contender at the start of the fight and challenge another contender when the boss gets to 50%. I'd honestly type slash challenge on that first contender still, just to be safe. I don't know if this will get fixed in the future, but this is how it is currently. Anyways, kill two contenders and down the boss for your achievement. Now we are at Plague Fall, which has a kind of difficult achievement to it. I would recommend doing Plague Fall in two goes for its achievements, but it can be done in one. So we're at the first boss here. Glob Grog. And if you want to be doing the achieves in one go, then you'll be going for two achievements here, Full Gore Meal and Riding with Slimes. Let's talk about Full Gore Meal first since it pertains specifically to this boss. Around the liquid slime area of the room, you'll see some big pieces of slime. You'll only see one at a time and it can be seen prior to the fight, so find it first. All that needs to be done is the boss needs to be brought on top of it and then it will dissipate. Then another one will spawn around the room, bring the boss over to it, it goes away, then find the third one and bring the boss over it for him to consume it. Now, don't really worry about DPSing him while this is going on because as soon as he eats one of these slimes, he heals full. 
or at least he heals a lot. But after he eats all three of the slimes that are in the outskirts of the room, you can kill him for this achievement. Now for the riding with slimes portion, this has you defeat all the bosses in Plague Fall while under the effects of Plague Fallen in a single Plague Fall visit. So this is an individual achievement. Now how to get this Plague Fallen debuff is to find a slime pool near a boss. Stand in it and let your stacks get up to 10. It does do quite a bit of damage so your healer should be ready, but once it gets to 10 you turn into a giant globule monstrosity whatever this is. Your movement speed is reduced by 45% and your haste is reduced by 10%. Now the key to get this achievement is you do not have to have it on during the entire boss fight. As long as you have it when the boss dies, you're good. It only lasts 2 minutes so don't worry about reapplying it or anything. But yeah, just make sure you get that before Globgrog dies uh, for that part of the achievement. Next achievement is going viral, which is off the next boss, Dr. Ickus. So this achievement has some setup to it first. First off, you want to definitely clear all the trash around his arena and you definitely don't want to pull him while doing this. Once all the trash is dead, you'll see a sparkly little vial on the front right platform. Now wait for Dr. Ickus to be on the back right platform before going for this since you don't want to pull him. Once you grab the vial, you'll get an extra action button and about 10 seconds to throw the vial. You'll want to throw it in the green cauldron that's right next to it, then a potion will appear on that cauldron. Someone else in your group has to grab it and move to the next cauldron and throw it in there. Keep doing that with all four cauldrons, but four different people have to do it since you do get a debuff saying you can't pick up the potion again. Make sure all cauldrons are glowing purple, then you're good to pull the boss. When the boss reaches 60% health, he'll fly off to a platform and spawn a slime out of the cauldron. The slime should have a tint of purple and be called a volatile plague bomb. Immediately kill this thing. Your tank should make sure to pull the congealed slime away from it or it will take 75% less damage. So once the volatile plague bomb is dead, DPS the boss down to 30%, he will fly off to another platform and do the same thing. Then kill that volatile plague bomb. Once it's dead, DPS the boss down for your achievement. If you're also going for riding with slimes, it's pretty easy to get your plague fallen debuff here since like half of the arena is a big slime pool. When the boss is flying to his last platform at 30% is when my group stood in the slime pool to get our plague fallen debuff. Just slow DPS if you have to since it does take like 20 seconds to get the plague fallen debuff. One thing to be aware of though, Dr. Ickus can jump around onto players locations and it will put down these green swirls in like an X type pattern, these green swirls cannot be seen on the green pool on the ground. So if he jumps to your location, just try to get like 20 to 30 yards away from him just to be safe and not die. For the riding with slimes achievements, it is fine if you die during the instance, you just have to be alive and have the plague fall and debuff as the boss dies. Now Domino Venom Blade does not have an achievement to her. I'm just showing you how we managed to do the Riding with Slimes achievement with her. We all went ahead and got our debuff at the very start of the fight. There's green puddles you can see on the outskirts of the arena. This is a pretty easy fight. Just be aware that your movement speed is reduced by 45%. And there's that one mechanic where you have to be near someone for the entire fight. Or if you're not, for like eight seconds or something, you get stunned. But there's that other ability which forces you to get away from your group. So just make sure to manage that so you don't die. Then we had a Margrave Stratima, which has no achievement specifically for her, but we are doing the Riding with Slimes achievement here. So this one was pretty hard for our group, mainly due to the fact of our gear level and this being recorded at the beginning of the expansion. Our average item level was probably like 175. So the only place here to get the Plague Fallen debuff is the area where you jumped down to. The slime around our arena will not get you Plague Fallen. In fact, it's even more deadly and it will kill you. So if everyone or whoever in your group is getting Plague Fallen, stand in the slime at the very start of the hallway. You also don't have to have everyone in group with the plague fallen by the way. Not sure if I mentioned that earlier. Like we got it for two of our members in one run and the other three in the next run. Once you've got plague fallen, use all speed increases you have to make it to her room and kill her. Biggest thing to keep in mind are the tentacles. No matter your DPS, you'll have to deal with them since she goes into her invulnerability phase at I think it's like 65 and 35% something like that. Use speed increases to dodge them since you move 45% slower since getting hit by them does hurt. Anyways, kill her for your Riding with Slimes achievement. Then finally go over to Revendreth to Halls of Atonement for our next set of achievements. Picking up the pieces is the first one here and it's off the first boss, Halkius. 
So the thing about this achievement is it currently makes no sense. I mean, you can read the text on the achievement on what you're supposed to do, but not even that seems to be entirely correct. I mean, the criteria for the achievement doesn't even spell the boss's name right. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you what my group did, which is what I'm pretty sure is intended, but it's still a goddess achievement. So to activate this boss, you have to kill three shards of Halkius. Now, they were all on these circular platforms, so you need to bring the boss over to those circular platforms. So make sure a lot of the trash is cleared, bring him around the beginning area of the instance over these platforms, and you should be good once you kill him. Next up is Breaking Bad off the next boss, Echelon. So through the fights, he'll spawn these undying stone fiends. He spawns six at a time, and your group needs him to shatter 18 of them with his stone shattering leap ability. So you can go about doing this in a couple different ways, depending on the gear level of your group. If you have a lower gear level, you can actually kill the undying uh, stone fiends each group at a time when they come out. Just make sure they're clumped up when you kill them, because they actually want to die. They just turn to stone and become unattackable. You just have to make sure that if you do this, that whoever has the stone shattering leap on them gets far away from them since it will break them if you're close alternatively you can wait for four groups of them to come out which is a total of 20 stone fiends aoe them all down at the same time and whoever gets stone shattering leap on them go stand on the big pile of them and then the boss will break them all kill the boss for your achievement the final achievement in this dungeon is nobody puts denathrius in a corner so first thing that you want to do is you want to dps the boss and get him low like as low as you can without killing him. Try to do like sub 20% while saving Curiosum or Bloodlust. We did ultimately get him to like 4% before finally killing him for the achievement. So once he's very low, you want to pick three corners of his arena and have your DPS and healers stand in them. I'd recommend not going right up against and hugging the corner since when he smashes a statue into you, you could get stuck and you'll die. But anyways, that's what you want to wait for. Lord Chamberlain will pick up his statues and smash them into players, and you need three of them in different corners. This does have some RNG with it, since he can grab one from one that's already in a corner and just bring it to another corner. But he does do this ability pretty frequently, which is why it's important to get him as low as possible. Once three statues are in different corners, blow the boss up for the achievement. Now for the final dungeon. Sanguine Depths. The first achievement is off the second boss, Executor Tarvald, and it's called Residue Evil. So this one can be a little finicky. First, what your group wants to do is kill all of the trash around the ring where the boss is. This is because he has to be dragged around the entire ring. Then your group wants to walk around to all the cages in the rings to find the forlorn captives. There's a total of eight of them. Mark the ground with raid markers so you know where they are during the fight. Now during the fight, the boss will summon a fleeting manifestation multiple times through the fight. Once this ad dies, it leaves behind a reddish black puddle on the ground, which is needed to kill the captives. But the longer the ad is up, the bigger the puddle is. So what has to be done is the ad has to be dragged to one of the cages with the forlorn captives and needs to stay alive till it has like 80 energy, then it has to die. So its puddle is big enough to kill all of the captives in the cage. There should be a total of four cages, by the way. Now the method that we did is that I would pet taunt the fleeting manifestation whenever they would come out. I'd send my pet by that cage and I would trap the ad. Our group would then get away from the ad as it grew in size since it does do AOE proximity damage. And once the ad reaches 100 energy, it will actually blow itself up, making the puddle more than big enough to reach the ads in the cage. So you want to do something like that for all the cages to kill the ads. You can also have four different people in your group set focus to one of the captives in each of the cages by selecting them before the fight and typing slash focus just so you know that it in fact does die from the ground aoe puddle since it's hard to tell during the fight also if you fail don't worry the captives do respawn so next achievement in this dungeon is with the last boss and i'm going to be honest this is the most difficult achievement of the entire meta it's called cal ed shot the reason it's so difficult is if you fail, you have to restart the entire dungeon over. So how this achievement goes is after you kill the third boss and the small amount of trash after her, there's a gauntlet of forever spawning hounds that you have to get through before the actual boss fight. Now, before you pull any of the trash of that gauntlet, the dogs don't matter, there are these Venthyr anima canisters at the start of it. You'll want whoever in your group is going for the achievement to click on an anima canister. Now I warn you, it does put a forever lasting dot on you that does about 
2,000 damage every 3 seconds, and if that person dies, then that person cannot get the achievement for the rest of that run. So it's recommended to do this in multiple instance runs, have like 2 people grab the canisters in one run, then the other 3 in the second run. Uh, it is a personal achievement by the way. Or, I mean, you can do it however you want to do it. Or if you're geared out to the wazoo, then all 5 of your group members can grab the canisters. But anyways, once the ads are aggroed, the canisters in the back will then break so no one can then grab one after the fact. Make it through this gauntlet without the people going for the achievement, dying. Make sure that whoever grabbed the Naru shield, whatchamacallit thing, uses it every time the boss starts to cast Gloom Squall. So once you make it through the gauntlet, now you're on to the boss fight. So how this is going to go is that to the left of the platform, kind of far off to the left, you'll see an empty Venthyr canister way off the side. It's kind of like hanging. Uh, you'll need whichever person is going for the achievement to stand on the left side of the platform, lined up with that canister. When she casts Gloom Squall, that person will then get shot over to the canister spam click it and they'll get teleported back to the platform then once the boss dies they'll get the achievements as long as they don't die the catch here is that the boss can do gloom squall in three different directions so you do have to wait for her to be on the right side of the platform casting it that's right side as you're walking into that boss area yeah so did i mention that this achievement also has rng to it as well which makes it even more annoying wait for her to teleport to the right side of the platform start casting gloom squall whoever has the naru shield use it it, but not on the left side where the person is getting punted from. Make sure that person getting punted has full health since the Gloom Squall does hurt. They will then get punted, they will spam click on the canister as they're flying to it, they'll turn into a ghost and get teleported back to the platform. And he did it. Almost. You no longer have the nasty anima dot. You do have a slammed debuff, which doesn't do any damage. Now, you actually don't want to do this with multiple people going at the same time, because one person might get in the way of the other, and you'll end up clicking each other instead of clicking the lantern, and both of you will fall to your death and fail the achievement. Anyways, kill the boss, and whoever's still alive with a slammed debuff will get to the achievement. This was my last one of the meta, but I do have one more to show you guys. This last achievement is called, I only have eyes for you. And don't worry, it's an easy one. So this can be done once you've downed the last boss. And the reason I'm showing it to you after her achievement is because you definitely don't want to attempt this while you have that nasty anima dot. So anyways, there are two crystals in the dungeon that need to be picked up. One of them is right before the last boss's room in this broken coffer whatever it is. Go ahead and click that and you have 10 minutes to make your way to about the front of the dungeon. It's easy if you, even if you don't have like speed increasers. So once you make it to pass the ring of Executor Tarval, you'll keep walking straight till you get to a room straight ahead that has an NPC named Duraka the Unbreaking. Select them and right click the gem in your inventory and you'll give him an eye. Then leave that room and go to the left clearing that trash and head to the room to the left of there and clear out that trash. Once that trash is dead, there's another gem behind this statue to pick up. Pick it up and head back to Duraka. Select him and right click the gem in your inventory to give him both eyes. He then becomes hostile, so kill him. He's pretty easy to kill, he just does this rotating eye beam thing to dodge and these brown swirls like the sentinels in the dungeon. Just kill him to get your achievements. Also make sure you're in the room when he dies. I've read a wowhead comment that said that they didn't get it to when they were out of the room when he died, so don't be that guy. So there you guys have it, all of the Shadowlands dungeon achievements, and this is the Verocious Gorger. Really neat looking mount. Anyways guys, that's the entire video. I hope it was helpful at all to you. If it was, feel free to leave a like on it. You can sub to the channel for more videos like this. If you have any questions on achievements, leave them in the comments below, and I'll do my best to help. But anyways guys, I'll see you all in the next video.